Okay, I'm still uh, on this using thermal camera to grade hives, uh, rabbit hole. So here's what I've got. Um, been pl I've played around with a couple uh, top-down photos, like in the video I showed you. And that's sort of... Uh, but you'd have to, I imagine grad students like, you know, taking photographs and measuring percentages. Then it occurred to me, I bet a computer can do that pretty quick. So I put some of those images into uh, an AI interface. It does that pretty well. You can be, um, you know, I think that we're going to have to, to fine tune that a lot. And I'm not sure how much scientific trust you'd put in it, but as a rough and ready measure, it's probably going to be pretty accurate. So I'm proposing... Now, of course, I basically said to it, count what percentage of the total image is black versus anything else. And it has the black is dead cold or ambient temperature, I think, and then uh, anything warmer than that is, is alive for the purposes of the hunt. So uh, one of the things you're gonna to have to do is make sure that your photographs uh, are pretty consistent. So when you need to make everything the same every time, every beekeeper knows you make a jig. This time, this is like a photographic jig instead of a saw jig, but same principle. Uh, so uh, I've got a super. Uh, this one's got an old beekeeper's name on it, Rod Boudreau. If you're still out there, give me a shout, will you? And uh, I'm proposing to, I just got a couple of chunks of wood kicking around. I've done a little bit of playing around and realized that I want my camera to be 26 inches above the center of the hive. And I don't want any bleed through from other hives, so I'm going to put the box and that'll kind of lock off anything around it. And the camera will be in the center of that and the box will also hold everything steady. This is, this is just my idea so far. I can't tell you this is gonna work or not. Anyway, we're gonna put it together. We'll see what we get. These by happen chance are, because they're made basically as repairs for box breakages, happen to be 20 inches. And I need 26 inches. It's six inches to the bottom of the handle here. So I can pretty quickly just slap that on there. Got my Robertson screws. Canadians know what I'm talking about. Oop. <laughs> Maybe want a longer one. Actually, it won't matter if the screw sticking through in the middle. I was, I was struggling to find the exact perfect three-quarter inch screw. Square to the handle. Use screws. This is going to go across the top. Just need to cut it off a bit. I'll go do that and be right back. Okay, we're back. I even pre drilled the holes just in case the Carpenters Union is watching. I should have pre-drilled the screws too.
Okay, and I propose to put elastics around the phone to now. If I was a million dollar researcher, I'd have a specialized camera. Don't just got a phone. So, and of course, I'm talking into the phone, so I can't go further with this without uh, going back to the thermal camera. Okay, we have the camera over my heated floor. Let's give it a little place. Oh, oh. Place for a little bit of definition. So that's a, where there's a heat line in the floor. And uh, you can see that the extent of the box there. I, mm, I should have centered this slightly more. Got to make it just one adjustment. All right, after a little bit more playing around and fine tuning, I ended up with this slightly snazzy angle. And the phone will sit there. The camera will be right here. And then it's just going to be a little bit easier to interact with because the phone will be tilted, so I don't have to be like up to uh, look at it. It'll just be slightly more visible. So that's the design. Let's go play. Okay, I'm going to go over some highs and we'll have a look. So there's number one. About half a box. Number two, quite a bit smaller. Now this one didn't look any more impressive on the top, but there's a lot more action there. They're sitting low down in the box. Same there, V spaces have B's in them, even though the top bars are completely blank. Nothing wrong with that. And now I got a really big one to end off with. As we scroll past these photos, you can decide for yourself how you'd rank them from one to six, and then put that in the comments, and we'll see if that agrees with AI. Okay, I think I got things queued up here to, I've got the images saved on my laptop, and I need to point the AI at them. So I'll do that now. So it says thinking. Okay, so it's first said, uh, now, I hope you put your predictions in the comments already. Uh, and then we will see, this member though, just like Letterman said, this is exhibition only, please no wagering. Uh, so, it's provided some interesting commentary here, but basically it's gone from Hive 6 as strongest, then Hive 1, um, then Hive 5, Hive 4, 3, and 2. So 1, uh, that one surprises me a little bit. So let's play with this a little bit more. I'm going to say, please rank them only by total area, not black. Ignore red versus green. Because I think what it's doing is a cluster that's t closer to the top is getting judged as stronger. Ah. So now we have a different ranking, six, 
four, five, three, one, and then two. That strikes me. I mean, I looked at those highs and that's the order I kind of had. Uh, let's see if we can get a chart out of that. All right, I think we got uh, something to work with. And the next steps will be to do a similar photography, still photos for hives in the Saskatchewan experiment at the end, uh, somewhere just before Christmas, like it's going to be under this under the Christmas tree uh, data kind of situation. Um, those hives will be re-ranked uh, with given uh, cluster scores. And then I will go in on my own initiative and take do the same thing, take photos of each hive and then we will compare and then I'll have the AI score them just the way we did now. And then we'll compare those scores to the uh, manual cluster scores uh, coming out of the research project. And we'll see if they line up. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.